Okay, in the following I want to show you how to use CLI modules within Mavis Lab. So I first start Mavis Lab and for this demo I will use the CLI modules that come with Slicer 4.3. In Mavis Lab you can just uh, start typing a module name or also keywords. So I type Slicer import for instance and I find the CLI importer module that I can instantiate by pressing enter. And I open the default module panel and um, if you are lucky, you should only have to press uh, import because um, you can configure one or more import paths uh, that are directories uh, that contain CLI modules, but it will also look into some default paths for uh, an installed um, slicer version and then uh, use that as a default CLI modules directory. Uh, at the end of the import process, it will give me uh, a status output that shows me uh, that 52 out of 66 modules were successfully imported due to some DLL dependency issues that you shouldn't have ideally. And uh, it also tells me to reload the module database, which you should do if you don't know better. And uh, this is it. This is the import process. You only have to do this once or whenever uh, the CLI modules change or there are new ones that you want to see. And after the import, you can find the CLI modules uh, along the normal Mavis Lab modules. They look and behave exactly the same. So for, inst uh, for instance, I can now uh, have a look at the properties of the modules. I can instantiate them. I can hover over the inputs to see uh, the names of the inputs or the, the uh, documentation. There's also a module help file generated that contains the module help. Uh, and it also links to the official slicer documentation. And uh, back in Mavis Lab, I can now use the module by connecting inputs and outputs. For instance, let's use the local image module to load demo data uh, and connect that to the input image field. Um, by clicking the output of this local image module, I can use the output inspector to see the this demo data set. And um, you can see that it contains some background signal that uh, this bias field connect, uh, correction should hopefully uh, make homogeneous. And uh, by double clicking the module, I can open the default panel that shows me the options divided into main and advanced options, um, the same as in, in Slicer, for instance. And um, I can run the module by pressing update. If I select auto update, it will be run whenever the input changes or auto apply uh, also runs it whenever the parameters change. And then I can also select the output of this module to see that in the output inspector. It's a little bit darker. And uh, I can also see the second output that contains the bias field itself and inspect that. Um, of course, I can use that to connect more modules, for instance, a 2D or 3D viewer. So for instance, I can also show ISO lines on top of the uh, corrected image uh, in a view 2D. Um, let's also have a quick look at some more complex example that has more options. Um, it will eventually have more than one advanced tab or more than one main tab uh, that contains sections for the different options. And you can also see that there are multiple types of options, enum options uh, and also numbers, uh, sometimes with ranges. Finally, I want to show you that there's a, a debug panel also for uh, debugging the execution. Here you can see the the path to the actual executable that's uh, executed behind the scenes. You can also select to retain the temporary files and uh, then you see the full command and also uh, the information that the module created on standard out and potentially standard error channels. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.